Hi, I'm Sophie Kravitz. I'm with Hackaday. Today, we're at Caesars Palace for DEF CON 26. Let's go. What do you have showing here on the, on the splash screen? Uh, this is just one of our bling modes. It's um, when we go through our menu, we had like ones with patterns, ones with like animated GIFs that you would see online. So you did a Kickstarter to fund this, right? We did. We sold uh, 300 uh, in about eight hours. Yeah, I saw that. It yeah. was like gone. It, it was gone immediately. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. The year before, we sold 100 in 12 hours. So the desire to buy these badges is just so high right now. We, we, don't, we can't believe it. We'll make things for fun, but we'd let a lot of the engineering bleed in where before we think of a quantity or what we want to do, we kind of just lay out what do we want it to do and down select our parts and try to put together, you know, trying to map out block diagrams and everything what we want, but, you know, taking the bomb and multiplying it and figuring out, well, that plus how many failures do we expect? What's the cost of prototyping? We kind of scale it up and go, well, what's the minimum number we need to make in order to make this project happen? Crypto and Privacy Village was founded in 2014 while I was studying for the bar exam because I needed something to do basically to procrastinate having to study all day, every day. Um, we showed up at our first DEF CON. Um, DEF CON provided a space and people also showed up. After the first year, it was a good enough success that we decided that we would do it again. And a friend of mine who I'd met at my very first DEF CON uh, said, hey, I'm thinking about making this hardware badge. I saw the ones the QueerCon guys did and it's so cool. Um, would Crypto and Privacy Village uh, like support me in that? And I was like, Sure, why not? And I thought, there's no way he's gonna do it. And he sent me a file with like schematics and what he was thinking and what were we gonna do with it? And what was the functionality? And I was like, okay, I guess this is happening. Three years later, this is our fourth badge. Um, and we Yes, we've learned a lot in the process. Um, the idea is that the physical badge actually tessellates and you're dropped in a maze and you have to go down hallways and collect keys to open doors. Um, and it also has a blinky mode. Uh, is there an accelerometer on here? That there is it. not an accelerometer. It's all capacitive touch what? to move. <gasps> That's so cool. How many different badges do you think are here? Probably over, prob if you include the shitty add-on, probably over 100. Um, actual physical badges, I would estimate probably 60. It's, uh, well, so I guess it's labeled as a, a Freescale K14. Um, I don't remember enough about their product line to remember where that fits in it. I would assume it's very fancy. So I did a run of 500 this year. I, so once I, I had mentally committed to getting them actually assembled professionally in China, and once, once uh, I had made that decision, right. that changes a bunch of other parts of the decision tree. So suddenly, if I'm going to pay someone else to make them, adding another LED doesn't cost me any time. So adding 50 more LEDs doesn't cost me any time. So, and it's just, if I want to make more, it's just turning a knob and putting more money in the machine. So, so I did a run of 500. Um, I ended up bringing about 480 with me, which is close to the number that actually succeeded and completely worked. So in this case, I had all this done by PCB Way, who okay. I've used for other projects before, who did a fantastic job, and whose sales rep called them really beautiful. Yes. Dark Tangent knew that we had done the Cypricon badges and they were pretty well received. And so uh, he was like, well, would you guys potentially be interested in doing the DEF CON badge? And we were like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it was a really interesting challenge. Um, and so we decided, eh, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And uh, so here we are. <laughs> So what, what, is, what is going on here? Can we get an overview of the puzzle? Sure, sure. So um, essentially, the theme of the conference is 1983. Mm -hmm. And that's the year before uh, the Orwellian collapse, as described in 1984, yeah. uh, you know, the book 1984. And uh, it's the year where you, we still have a chance. There's still a chance to make decisions that benefit the future, right. right? That change it, that keep it from becoming the 1984 that we read about. How many badges did you make? 28,200. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so 26,300 humans all the way down to 25 Ubers. So, yeah. Who manufactured them? Uh, e-TechNet, which is 
actually has an office. Its main office is in uh, the U.S., so Arizona, and uh, their fab is in China. So uh, Joe Grands worked with them on a number of DEF CON badges, and so he recommended that we use them, and I, I can't speak enough about their work. Programming this meant mean chips, like 29,000 chips. Usually the best time to program them is as the chip is being manufactured, you know, direct, like before the, the mold is even completed. But because that would have required us to have a much longer lead time, uh, we just didn't have time. And so we had to get them programmed as, you know, fully completed chips. And so the chip supplier that we contacted said, oh yeah, 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 sure, no problem. And this was back in February. and. Um, so we're like, okay, good. They've got plenty of time to figure it out. They know how many chips we need. I've let them know to reserve the chips. And three weeks ago, three to four weeks ago, they say, hey, we don't, uh, we don't know how to program these chips. And it's not like they're new chips. They're, they've been around for a long time. And they're like, uh, yeah, so here are screenshots of our programming uh, machines. Can you tell us what checkboxes to select to program these chips? And we're like, that's what we're paying you for. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and so, thanks for nothing. Please overnight them to China. You know, to our fab. Um, and the fab essentially said, yeah, we can get some temp workers. Teach us how to program these. You know, on the board manually. Um, and we'll do it. So you had to teach them yeah. how yeah. to program the board, yeah. and you're in Rochester, Minnesota. Yeah. And so you're teaching. So we like we're China. like. Can, do you guys have access to YouTube? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay, here's the YouTube video. Yeah. Wow. Here's some pictures. You know, here's what you should see. How uh, nervous were you? Uh, I mean, like, I think I've had a heart attack this entire, like, I don't even know, like, it sounds so stressful. just yeah, it's it's been insane. Isn't it so cute? No. The functionality of this badge is kind of to move and uh, challenge some of the aspects of, of badge making in itself. So there, a lot of people have, in recent years, have come out with badges that blink a lot and do really cool animations, whereas ours, uh, we wanted to kind of add the aspect of 3D printing. So the arm is completely uh, removable, replaceable, uh, and the STL files are online for anybody to modify and do anything that they'd like with it. The back of the badge uh, has uh, kind of the MCU on it, and that's where Daniel's genius kind of comes in. Um, yeah, it's um, it's super simple. Uh, I have my dev unit that's sort of a mess here, but uh, we have a cheap Cortex uh, M0 uh, CPU up here. I think it was maybe like 70 cents after it was all said and done, uh, and a really cheap um, Buck DC DC regulator, a uh, small transistor driver circuit for the servo. Um, this is a off the shelf uh, servo you'd see in small RC cars for steering. Um, bought those really cheap from China uh, in a bulk of a hundred. Um, battery pack, button, a uh, couple of power switches. That's about it. Okay, wait. That'll help. Uh, the idea from this came, I think it was two DEF CONs ago, when I was in uh, Paris, uh, when DEF CON was over at Paris, I saw the squid, uh, QueerCon squid badge, which had the clear solder mask, and I saw the Andexor guys uh, doing their independent badges, and I saw a ton of Mr. Robot stuff, because the DEF CON, some of the DEF CON higher-ups are consultants on the shows. So I basically those three ideas just went into my mind and I came up with this. Yes, it, like I can do a Mr. Robot V for Vendetta ripoff kind of thing and I can do a clear solder mask and every board house can do black solder black silk screen and white silk screen which means every board house can do black and white silk screen. The main thing here is with a it's a 18 by 18 30 324 LEDs and so the main goal was to make getting stuff on the badge and getting the badge pretty really, really easy. So it was more of a matter of basically getting a frame buffer on there so you could draw what you wanted to draw. And then the next step from that is doing pixel art is a pain, but if you can go and just grab something off the web like you do with any other service like Slack and toss it in there and then get it on the badge, like I wanted to get that to be super fast. 
So we basically built out a Python pipeline that just programmatically generates code. You just toss, toss an image in a directory, it'll go and generate all of the buffers that would go with an image or an animated GIF, and you can just toss it on the badge. The connector here is basically just a FTDI USB to serial header right here. It goes right into the ESP and then it's just communicating over I squared C to the driver chip there. So um, a week ago I was 40 grand in the hole. I put 40, wow. 40 grand into this project. Okay. How um, did you fund it? Was it from a bank loan? Last year and last year and we have some super secret private equity okay. thing that somebody could sue me for. Okay. Um, and last year and credit cards. Okay. So I am 40 grand in the hole oh. as of right now because I haven't gone to a bank and it's yeah, Saturday. But you have. I'm ballparking it now that I will take home about 40 grand, which is going into next year, which okay. is I'm doing injection molding next year. Okay. So that's going to eat a lot of that up. Okay. There's a silver lining in every cloud. Right, right. Space Force. Space Force. <laughs> I decided to really take the badge life plunge. I'd been involved a little bit in the Hackaday um, conference badges, but I didn't really do um, hardware engineering or fabrication for those, and I'm like, I should see what this is all about. So uh, I took my favorite video game, Galaga, which every time I see it, I'm like, I gotta go play Galaga, right? And I'm like, I'm gonna do the ship from Galaga. Um, I started design on July 1st and um, did everything as fast as I possibly could and assembled in my, my, in my basement. I finished with 59 of them on the 27th of July, plenty of time for DEF CON. But one of the things that was really important to me is badges get big and heavy and I, didn't, I don't like that because um, I'm often wearing like six or seven of them at a time. And so um, also to go with the name, I call it the coin op badge, I wanted to do a coin cell battery. Um, I also took the time to do an add-on uh, which I think is a really cool standard and it took off and I think it's awesome that it's on the official badge. Yep. Um, but it's on like so many badges. The Darknet badge has it, obviously like the Anodexor badge has mm -hmm. like most of the badge makers have them. And I think that that is a really powerful way for people to get into it who just don't have the time to, you know, do like a full, full featured badge. badge. Yeah. This is a, a project from a group called Open Research Institute. We're a new nonprofit and we were organized to help open source projects in amateur radio. Uh, the project that this is uh, most closely associated with is Phase 4 Ground, and that's an amateur radio project. It's a uh, microwave band digital communication system for both uh, space and terrestrial use. Uh, the design of the badge is based on an old amateur radio from the 1950s called the uh, Zenith Transoceanic. So the front dial of that uh, tube-based radio, it's a very art deco looking radio, is something that we really enjoy. Uh, I think it's very beautiful. It's, it's the challenge of creating something that people don't think is possible out of something that the manufacturer goes, why am I making a kitty cat? Um, how could this possibly be useful? And it, is, it has no practical purpose. This software and, and the way you create it is, is designed for making functional devices. And you're using it to create art, using different techniques and layers and things like that. And I just kind of went down a rabbit hole. So that's it from DEF CON. We had an amazing time here talking to badge creators and we'll see you next year.